Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The name of today's video is, What if it's 4 a.m. and you can't get back to sleep? Sound familiar? Before we go into this topic, I have to, of course, tell my, you know, opening pun. And it is this. What did they give the world's top dentist for his accomplishments? A little plaque. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, don't we love puns? Uh, so, title again is, What if it's uh, 4 a.m. in the morning and you can't get back to sleep? So just two days ago, what got me to write this script was something that happened in my real life. 48 hours ago, I was having lunch with a really good friend. And I don't know, about halfway through, she said, I'm sorry, you know, but I have to go home now and, and go to sleep. I said, isn't it a little early in the day? She said, well, I've been up since, I got up at 2 a.m. I couldn't get back to sleep, so I've been up ever since then, and now I feel like crashing. So I got to go home and crash. That, my friend, is a problem that many people experience. Welcome to the world of insomnia. When you think of insomnia, many people think of it, they think, oh, I can't get to sleep, can't fall asleep. But when people are depressed, the much more common manifestation of insomnia is you can fall asleep, but then you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep. I've experienced this multiple times. As a matter of fact, every time I've had depression, in one particular bad episode, I was at New York Hospital. I remember going to bed at 11, waking up at 1, two hours of sleep, and then I could not get back to sleep. I was pacing up and down, up and down, the quarters of the hospital, going by the nurse's station until breakfast. It was a waking nightmare. That happened 38 years ago when I was 33. By the way, if you want to find out my age, just do the math. Anyway, now I continue to wake up in the middle of the night. However, there's good news. I usually go right back to sleep. I actually wake up in the middle of the night because I have to go to the bathroom, right? All you seniors, they can relate to that. However, sometimes, I can't get back to sleep. Usually I'm ruminating about the past, chewing over the events of the present and my problems, or going to the future and worrying. Or I might be really calm in my mind, but my body is wired up like this and there's adrenaline flowing through. I don't know why, but I can't relax. So fortunately through trial and error, I have found some techniques, some tools, some strategies to, to help me out when these things happen. And I now want to share them with you. I like to begin with a strategy. It's been around for a long time. Many of you have known about it. It's very simple, but effective. And it's called counting backwards from 100 to 1. The sequence goes like this. 99, 98, 97, 96, 95. Oh my God, it's working already. Anyway, uh, it's, it puts you in a hypnotic state, right? And the, the other thing I do is I have a visualization I visualize uh, my favorite beach in Manzanita, Oregon, and there's a hundred sheep on one side of a beautiful stream going into the ocean. And I, sh I show them, I visualize them jumping over the stream one by one, going from the south side of the beach to the north side. And th then a shepherd approaches them and leads them down a beautiful path uh, to a big grassy field open with plenty of grass and plenty of room to roam. So I count backwards, I see the sheep moving into their pastures. And I never quite make it to 50 because I'm usually asleep by then. So try it. Count backwards from 99 to 1. You don't have to have a visualization, but uh, it helps and it always seems to work. The next two techniques I want to share both work with your physical body. These are very helpful when your mind is calm, but your body is really tense. The first one I've described in a whole video, it's called progressive muscle relaxation. You start with your feet and you squeeze your muscles like this and relax, then your calves, then your thighs. You work yourself right, right up to your head and then start over again. And, and it's such a common and old uh, technique. If you Google progressive muscle relaxation, you'll see videos on it, including mine, I hope. The other thing is called square breathing. Uh, breathe into the count of four, hold for the count of four, breathe out to the count of four, and hold for the count of four. I learned this when I was uh, visiting my nephew in a recovery uh, in inpatient recovery, alcohol and drug treatment center, and the uh, therapist there taught people that very effective in terms of calming down anxiety, relaxing the body. In for, hold for, out for, hold for. The next technique has to do with focus your mind on something else besides your worries and anxieties. Way back when, <laughs> in the 1980s, before there was the internet and smartphones, 
I used to get up in the middle of the night, and if I couldn't get back to sleep, I'd read a novel. And as I was reading it, I would start to fall asleep and get drowsy. Now, of course, we have smartphones. So you can, before you go to bed, you can put your smartphone by your bedside and you queue it up to your favorite podcast or your audiobook or maybe your favorite Mozart relaxing music. And when you get up, if you can't get back to sleep, hit the on button and just let your mind listen to the music or follow the story or listen to the interesting discussion. And again, pretty soon, before you know it, you'll start to get drowsy. The next idea is to use a soothing affirmation or mantra, something you repeat to yourself over and over again, like, I am well, I am well, I am relaxed, you know, some, some phrase that you can really get into. And the one I, I've talked about this in other videos, it's, a, it's written by a 14th century uh, mystic named Julian of Norwich. It was given to me by a, a client who basically told, her, told me that when she couldn't get back to sleep, when she was obsessively thinking, she would uh, read this, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Or I should say she'd repeat it. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. There's a certain rhythm to that. And especially if you're worrying about the future, what's going to happen, the unknown, those words seem to be very soothing. I'll say them one more time. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. My final technique is called don't just lie there, do something. So let's assume that you've tried the counting of the sleep, the progressive muscle relaxation, the, the square breathing, the mantras, the affirmations, listening to the podcast, the music, etc., and nothing is helping. At that point, after about 20 minutes, the doctors tell you, get out of bed. Don't just lie there and say, oh my God, I'm never going to sleep again and perseverate. After 20 minutes, get up and do something physical. Wash the dishes, uh, vacuum the floor. What else do I have here? Do the laundry. Uh, clean your office, take a walk around the block, and by doing something physical and taking, again, your mind off, uh, obsessing about the sleep, you'll eventually just get naturally tired. And finally, there's something called sleep hygiene that I talk about extensively in a, in a video called The Role of Sleep and Healing from Depression, which means having a set of habits and patterns that will make it more likely that you won't wake up in the middle of the night and you'll get to sleep effectively, such as keeping your room cool and dark, not letting any outside light in, finding a, a regular time to go to sleep and a regular time to wake up and avoiding caffeine and alcohol before bed, certainly three or four hours. Some people find that if they drink coffee after 3 p.m., they, they can't sleep. So you can kind of manage this on your own, but these are, these are really good sleep habits. And there's a book called No More Sleepless Nights by Peter Howry, H-A-U-R-I, that really, I think, has the best description of it. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you can use some of these techniques and tools to sleep better. It is so important to get a good night's sleep. It is the most, one of the most important things you can do for yourself because sleep, everything depends on sleep. Your nervous system, your immune system, uh, your cardiovascular system, it affects everything. And so 100 million people have sleep disorders in America. Well, maybe we can start using some of these and, uh, and get a better night's sleep. This has been Douglas Black. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a like. The more likes these videos get, the more likely YouTube is going to recommend new videos to you and to other people. Uh, if you want to make a comment, please do so. I really like uh, responding to your comments. And if you want to uh, send me an email, simply do so at douglasblock at gmail.com. I really welcome all of your feedback. If you want to subscribe to this channel, uh, click on my photo in the closing credits. And to the right of the, uh, well, you'll be taken to a subscribe page and you click on a subscribe button, and then to the right of that, there's a bell. If you click on that, you'll be notified every time we do a new video or a new live chat. And if you want to become a monthly sustainer to this channel for as little as $2 a month, simply click on the Patreon logo in the closing credits, and you'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery, and above all, I wish you a good night's sleep. Thank you for watching. See you next time.